When you understand personality preferences, you can more readily appreciate the differences between you and the people who are closest to you, such as your spouses, maybe your partner, your children, your friends, even other family members. And in most areas of life, when differences between you and someone else are bothersome or frustrating, you can actually avoid them in some kind of way. But what if that person is your best friend? or maybe that first one's a loved one, a family member, or even your spouse. You'd have to do a lot or lose a lot to walk away from it. So knowledge of personality type allows us to see the differences as those, just as being different, not right or wrong, we're just all different. So instead of labeling someone or putting value judgments on their behavior, you can start to see that behavior reflects their personality type or their preference. And it's not really designed to offend you or frustrate you or make you angry. Many couples can learn to appreciate the differences and even can see them through a humorous light. In relationships, the ISTP is very independent. They're very calm and they tend to be quite handy around the house. They love to do list and really being able to solve problems. They are very fun, loving and adventurous and they're going to encourage the people around them to learn new things and really to try something new physically, especially a physical skill. They're good at responding to physical needs, but they're not very good at dealing with emotions. They do tend to be very good at troubleshooting and they're going to look for practical solutions to all the problems. And though there may be some more personal issues that are going to stump them because they are a little obtuse when it comes to feelings. They're private. They tend to keep their feelings and reactions to themselves. They withhold themselves at times and they prefer to simply move on to another activity than to dwell on some kind of emotional experience. The ISTPs really do comprehend that emotions are temporary and they don't find them to be a very interesting topic of conversation. They're unlikely to give flowery speeches or make very great romantic gestures. They're going to show their affection by being practical service to their partners and they want their partners to appreciate that they love them because they get things done and they give the partner plenty of space to accomplish what they'd like to do. With their partners, they tend to be very capable individuals and they're good at everything that interests them. They're bright, they're interesting, and they're exciting and they have so much to offer everybody. They can live almost entirely in the present moment, meaning they're very present oriented. And they do not take their commitments beyond the immediate foreseeable future, which means that nothing is unconditional. They really prefer to take things one day at a time, one task at a time, even one moment at a time, rather than making lengthy commitments. And if a relationship satisfies them and interests them, then they're going to do their part every day to keep that relationship strong and healthy. But if they lose interest in on it, guess what? They're just going to move on. The strengths are that they are good listeners. They tend to be very self-confident. They're optimistic and fun to be with, practical, realistic, and they can handle daily concerns. They're not threatened by conflict or criticism, and they're able to relieve a relationship when it's over with great ease. They are able to administer punishment to their children and those in responsibility, but they don't like to do that. And they really are going to be very respectful of other people's needs for space and privacy. On the weakness side, they live entirely in the present, which means at times they might have difficulty with those long-term commitments and long-term covenants. They're not naturally good at expressing feelings and emotions, and which means that they're also not going to be very in tune to what others are feeling, which makes them seem almost as if they are insensitive. They have a tendency to be very private and they might even hold back part of themselves. This means that they do need a lot of personal space, and it also means that they don't want that personal space to be invaded. They like action, excitement, and at times they might stir the pot just to get a little bit of it. 
They are very intense and exciting individuals, and they are strong, which means that they have this thinking preference, which makes them seem almost aloof and hard to get. Their sensing and perceiving preferences make them very sensual and even earthly at times. And these attributes frequently make them attractive to the opposite sex. But remember that ISTPs live entirely in the current moment, which means that they're always going to be interested in new sensations and experiences. They strongly dislike any type of routine or schedule, and they don't want to be controlled by others. They are fiercely and adamantly independent. They need their own space within their relationship. And when they're involved in a relationship that is going to provide for basic needs and also present them with new experiences, they'll be very happy to do whatever it takes to keep the relationship alive and well. But if it gets boring, guess what? They'll try to fix it or they'll just move on. They take their commitments on that day-to-day -day basis. And even if they say, I do, at the altar, remember, it means I do for now. They do not like to make lifelong commitments or eternal commitments because they are very well involved in relationships that are one day at a time. They're going to look at intimacy as a physical act rather than an expression of love and affection. And they are also very sensual beings. So they want to experience intimacy with all five senses. So that means they want to be spontaneous and creative and enthusiastic. They want new experiences and they need aesthetic beauty within their settings. Now remember, they like to fix things. So since they like to fix things, at times they might even try to create problems in order to fix it. They have a tendency to really hold back on their views and they like to listen to other people's views, but they will be non-committal when it comes to expressing their own. So they have a habit of evading answering questions by simply asking more questions. And this will be really frustrating at times, especially if their spouse wants a direct answer. Now remember that their decision-making process is gonna be internal, so they don't feel like they really need to share their opinions with others. They are simply interacting. And when they're in that information gathering mode and taking in information, they're gonna ask a lot of questions rather than sharing what they already know. They just don't feel a need to expose themselves to others. This is really further motivation to them to protect themselves because they're afraid of having to deal with those deeper feelings because remember, they're more interested in thinking than feeling. They do not really have a well-developed feeling side. Um, as they get older, they can develop that if they choose to. They will feel great love. So don't think that just because they don't have feelings or they don't have that feeling preference that they don't feel love. But they don't really show that emotion. And at times they express them very inappropriately or inadequately. Now remember, they do have very strong feelings, but they tend to feel affections one day at a time, and they will feel completely and intensely in love with their mate, and the next day they might even feel disinterested or ready to move on, because remember, they're present-oriented, and they like to live in the moment. Their kindred souls are the ESTJ, ENTJ, ISTJ, ISFP, and the ESTP. So let's look at why we have chosen those kindred souls. So our natural attraction to people who share our dominant function, but who use it in different directions works very well for us. We not only flip flop that introverted or extroverted trait, but we're also going to flip flop the judging and perceiving traits. So in this way, the partner that we choose for ourselves is going to have a very different approach to dealing with the external world. But if we're laid back and indecisive, then generally our per partner is going to be structured and decisive. And if we're reserved, our partner is going to be outgoing. For all of our apparent differences, though, we do still have a common vision of what's really important in life, and that creates the foundation between these kindred souls. Although we really believe that this model is going to work well in finding and maintaining healthy relationships, it's important to remember that it's only a guideline. 
just a guideline, just a guideline to help understand and to give some tools and some ideas of things that value in a relationship, but they're not meant to be followed strictly. So remember that any two well-developed individuals of any type can make a relationship work and work really work is the key problem here and the key concept because there's no such thing as an effortless relationship. So don't use these ideas as an excuse to really dump your relationship.